Okay, so continuing to field more questions here for U.S. Simili. I have a student asking me a two-part question, actually. Number one, why are averages on the U.S. Similes increasing over the years? And number two, why do people tend to do better on step two compared to step one? Okay, so I will give you a few important points here. Okay, why are the U.S. Simili averages gradually creeping up over the years? And why do people tend to score higher on step two than step one? Okay, isn't that peculiar? So why don't we... Uh, start the fucking clip. However, before we get started, I will be an asshole like I usually am. Tell you to subscribe to my channel, okay? So some points I want to make are, number one, people are using QBanks more than they used to in the past. It might sound very baseline, standard, uh, low-key. You say, well, yeah, I mean, of course people prepare with QBanks. Yeah, they do now in 2021. When I sat the U.S. Similes a decade ago, believe it or not, not everybody used QBanks the way you might imagine, okay? About a decade ago, it was more of, a, of an important strategy to discuss. Using QBanks more carried the weight of, hey, I've got a very good tip for you to increase your score on the U.S. Similes. You should really be doing QBanks, like do t two QBanks, like as an example. Okay, whereas now that's not novel information. Okay, people would be like, well, no fucking shit, I'm gonna prepare with QBanks. Um, like, why wouldn't I do that? And if you're not preparing with QBanks, how are you preparing? So that's why averages are going up. People are learning to use QBanks. And then a second point is why do people go up on step two compared to step one? It's because people learn from their mistakes when they were studying for step one. People tend not to probably do enough questions when they're preparing for step one, okay? They tend not to uh, engage the material enough. They tend not to focus on the NBMEs enough. They might get a shitty step one score and then say, fuck, how do I prepare better so I can ace step two? And then they do the questions they're supposed to do. They go through the NBME material as they're supposed to. And then they're going to perform better on step two. So they learn from their mistakes. And then finally, another point is, on average, people tend to simply enjoy step two material more based on my conversations with people, okay? I've never seen some objective survey where it's like, did you like step one more than step two, okay? Most people tend to prefer step two material. They tend to say, yes, finally, like clinical application, like actually like good medicine. I don't have to deal with all the molecular enzyme horse shit that I did for step one. That tends to be how a lot of people are, okay? I was the opposite. I actually preferred step one material more. I know some of you watching this are like, really? What the fuck? I hate step one. That's how I was. I preferred step one. I thought step two was boring as fuck, okay? So people are going to have different opinions, but I think if you're interested in the material, then you're more inclined to engage it more strongly and actually learn it better. And that can contribute to a higher score. Okay, so uh, you know the deal. I'm going to continue making more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.